So 99 times out of 100, I would say do not get into any sort of argument on the internet, especially not in the comment section of a social media platform. I mean, you know, what do you hope to accomplish there? But today, we're going to take that head on and look at some trolling comments that have been on this channel over the last, you know, really just week. Could have gone back further than that, but got to put some sort of parameters on it. Uh, going to do that because some of these are just kind of funny, to be honest. But others actually bring up topics that I think are worth kind of expanding on and getting into a little bit. Starting out a couple days ago, I put up some pictures of the Ukrainian SBU unit Alpha, which honestly I just kind of thought were cool pictures. But KKJU2BQ, which you know, I'm not even sure that's their real name, said, is this YouTube guy some jerk or what? Which, you know, to be fair, I can see how you got there from this picture. So. No hard feelings, KK. Then on the same post, EROT4HW, which is another pretty unique name, said there's no way you aren't a DIA asset, Preston. LMAO. So DIA is Defense Intelligence Agency. It's one of the many intelligence agencies uh, we have here in the United States. So quick story there. Uh, first off, my handler said that I can't address this one directly. So it's off, off limits. Um, but I did apply for a job probably like five years ago for DIA. It was after I left active duty. Um, I was in the civilian workforce. I might have been in the National I would have been in the National Guard at the time. Um, but DIA has a bunch of uniformed and civilian workers within you know the DOD. And I was at a job fair and DIA had a booth. Um, so I had my you know, resume and all that stuff and, and handed it over to see what the guy thought. You know, where could I apply? Because there's these like different um, kind of departments, if you will, within DIA, pretty big organization. And now I had no expectations of being like some, you know, secret international spy or something like that, but gave the guy my resume. He looked through it and he said, yeah, so based off we got here, I think you could be good as an office administrator. And I don't think the title was actually office administrator, but like looking at the description and, and what it meant, like that was it, like administrative assistant kind of thing. Um, I am pretty sure I ended up submitting an application there, but like so many government jobs, you put your application in, it goes into a black hole and you never see it again. Um, but I was, you know, I don't know, maybe office administrator uh, wasn't necessarily on my alley, but I tried. I did try at one point to head the direction of DIA. On another note, if you ever see any, it's kind of a personal rule of thumb, if you ever see anything that you're, you know, looks like um, it could be American propaganda or American intelligence or influence operations, and it looks like it's being effective, especially like on social media, 99 times out of 100, if not more, I'd be willing to bet it has nothing to do with the U.S. government. That's just, we are so bad at that. This, this information war, we are, we are so, so bad at that, especially when it comes to social media. And it's something we're really lagging behind, especially when looking at Russia and China. I mean, there was a report, I'll see if I can find it here and link it in the description, but there was a report like about a year ago where Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, so I guess Meta and Twitter, you know, tagged these handful of accounts that they said were associated with the U.S. government and weren't properly documented. Like, I guess if the U.S. government tells them they're running these secret accounts, it's okay, but they hadn't told them, something like that. So anyways, they outed this group of Twitter handles, Facebook pages, stuff like that, that were pushing this, you know, pro-American propaganda. And it was largely focused in the Middle East. And it was just awful. Like the Twitter accounts had like, I, you know, I'm not going to try to rattle the numbers off the top of my head, but tiny engagement, tiny followings, like across dozens or even hundreds of accounts, nobody was seeing this stuff, right? So that, we we're so, so bad at that, that, uh, you know, again, I'm not naive enough to think that there aren't some sort of, of agencies or organizations within the United States trying to do, you know, influence type operations abroad or, or even domestically. But for the most part, my God, we are way, way behind on that front. Now, to be clear, I'm saying that the U.S. government is bad at this whole information operation space, not necessarily Americans or the American public as a whole. So one of the theories... To, you know, to just to explain that, that I like, goes back to the Cold War, where it says that because the United States came out of the Cold War on top and were successful, there was less of a focus here in the U.S. to look internally to figure out what we needed to change and adapt, you know, going forward. We 
we had the upper hand diplomatically, economically, and militarily, whereas the Soviet Union, then Russia, coming out, you know, not winning the Cold War, was forced to look into other ways to compete with the United States in the world stage, which is one of the reasons they spent a lot more time and energy on their information operations as a whole. Another aspect that I think plays into why the United States is a little bit behind here is, you know, marketing and propaganda are very similar in a lot of ways. Somehow we feel like marketing is okay and propaganda is all bad, but at the end of the day, it's really the same thing, right? It's trying to, you know, by looking at human behavior, influence how people think or act around a certain subject. And in the United States, you know, the capitalist society that we live in here, if you're really good, we call it a, a master manipulator, to have that skill set to be able to influence how people think about a certain topic, you are going to make so much more money doing that for any Fortune 500 company than you would for any government agency, and it's, it's not even close. So big picture, the whole information operation space just isn't something that the U.S. has really focused on for the last 20, 30, 40 years even. And on top of that, I think it's fair to say that we're probably not drawing in the best people in that field to do government work rather than you know head off to Amazon, Meta, or any other big company. In another post, I said the U.S. announces $345 million in military aid for Taiwan on July 28th, with a link to the article from Reuters. Truth Please 4868 said, I am Russian bot. I've been paid to say, what about our debt, Mexican border, make Ukraine peace? And Wilf Dar responded saying, I'm a Chinese bot. I've been paid to say there is no nation called Taiwan. America should mind its own business. It doesn't matter because American missiles can't see the mighty dragon. So, you know, there is an argument here. There's an interesting piece here where I do think the term bot has been heavily overused. There 100% are bots on YouTube. There's always the financial one that pops up. Um, and you'll see the, the, the comment you know, so-and-so helped me with financial freedom. And then it's like 60 responses immediately that are, can you send me their information? This would be life-changing. I've followed it too. I've heard of that just, you know, pure garbage bot spam stuff. I have seen, you know, in personal experience on some of my posts, what I would call bot activity. Uh, it's probably less than most people think, but it does exist where a comment will come up. It doesn't look out of the ordinary. It's, you know, a, a controversial statement maybe. Um, and it's going to rile some people up, but it's not really, you know, unique, all things considered. The, the bot type activity is when in a matter of like six or seven seconds, there's five to 15 responses that are agreeing with or kind of amplifying that. And then that one comment gets 15, 20 or 40 likes, you know, like that in a split second, faster than, you know, realistically that many people have probably even seen the post. So that does exist. They're 100% our bots on the platform. Um, I, you know, personal take, I think we overuse that term to where it's really degraded, to where people aren't using it to describe that. Um, and it's more and more been used to describe anything that, you know, I, I, this is very broad, but it's largely used to describe kind of opposing, opposing point of views. And, you know, anyways, there are still trolls. I think that the bigger issue that I see more and more, and the ones we're going to try to hit on here are what I would call more trolling type comments, where it's not necessarily a bot. There's no reason to suspect it's a bot other than you just don't want to hear it. But it's it's a comment left trying to, you know, anger somebody or piss somebody off or, or kind of poke someone in the eye with no real desire to engage in any like constructive uh, conversation or back and forth. It's just just anger, kind of you know, riling people up. To me, that's like a much bigger thing. But the reason I wanted to bring this one up uh, from Truth Please, who's just poking fun of this whole thing, I am Russian bot. You know, I think there's room for this stuff. And the reason that it ends up getting traction, things, you know, what about our debt in the United States? What about the Mexican border? What about making Ukrainian peace? Those aren't crazy arguments, right? Like I, you know, from, from where I sit, my personal opinion is that I don't know that our government has done a, a very good job of explaining why our support for Ukraine has taken a priority over other things. I just don't think that that argument's been there. I think it's something that we can improve upon at the national level, explaining why this is so important for us to continue supporting Ukraine in the way that we are. Um, I know some people are going to hear that and say it couldn't be more obvious. Um, of course, we have to. 
But, you know, it, it's not a 50-50 split here in the United States. There's a recent poll that just came out where it's, it's I think it's for the first time ever, just over 50% of the country is not in favor of continuing or another increased level of aid package to Ukraine, something along those lines. Anyways, you know, don't, don't quote me on those numbers. The, the challenge is there is a percentage in the United States that is not on board with the continued support for Ukraine. So I would take that to mean the argument has not been made in a very effective manner, if that is the case. You know, when we're talking about things like our debt or domestic issues, my, again, personal stance, I tend to believe that a strong United States able to exert our influence around the world is important on the, uh, you know, for, uh, for strength uh, domestically. But that's one point of view, and that doesn't, that's not the absolute 100% uh, answer all the time, right? So, I do think it's interesting when some of these kind of, you know, if we view any question about our debt or any question about our border or any question about peace as being bots, like, you know, there's a reason that stuff gets traction. And I think it's because there are rational arguments to be had there. And that's probably one of the reasons that our adversaries at times have used those to kind of drill in on and, and expose potential rifts here in the United States. Now, the, the Chinese portion here, there is no nation called Taiwan. America should mind its own business. It doesn't matter because American missiles can't see the mighty dragon. Those are a little more, especially, you know, those are a little more obvious that they're external based. It's not necessarily an American saying those things, but maybe a, a, uh, a foreign citizen or a foreign entity chiming in. A little easier to, to detect those. But honestly, I haven't seen nearly as much kind of pro China type comments in any of my posts, even when it's things talking about Taiwan, I don't know if that's because they're not there, um, if they're being weeded out somehow by YouTube, um, or if they're, you know, maybe China's not taking this approach of actually, you know, talking about things that are overtly pro-China, and they might be doing some of the more, you know, we'll get to this in a second, um, kind of the digging at kind of the uh, at the foundation of our country, right? Kind of the societal, political, and economic uh, gaps maybe is something that they're trying to exploit. But actually with that, let me jump into the next one here. All right, the next one is a recruiting poster from the Cold War uh, for the Air National Guard. It's a couple jets flying by, and right at the top, it says, go hunting this weekend. I think it's, I don't know, I like these old recruiting posters. I think they're pretty interesting. I don't mean to suggest from the previous commentary that these are, automatically Chinese, you know, influence operations or anything like that. It just makes me wonder if maybe China's heading more this direction than the over, you know, pro-China stuff. Anyways, Dewey Sturgill said, ah, yes, the good old days before the average American male had to squat to pee. So that's one thing I've noticed uh, across the channel. Anytime I talk about uh, the, the war in Ukraine and the, you know, Russian or Ukrainian military or any NATO or Western support for Ukraine, it's a very set argument about, you know, there's kind of the set talking points that, that you'll see. When I talk about the U.S. military, even in this sense, showing uh, a 30 or 40 year old recruiting poster, it, it, it goes the, the woke route of our military. And it's one of those things that it is so much more uh, prevalent on the Internet than in real life. So I, you know, one of the reasons I'm, I'm relatively clean shaven right now is just had a little, my little monthly time with the Army this past weekend. And so now I'm, I guess, just crossed the 14-year mark in the Army, and we, we've had a lot of changes. I'm not going to suggest that every policy the Army or the DOD or the U.S. or whatever, it, it's never all been perfect. We made a ton of mistakes along the way, right? But I get online and see comments like this, and it's this, this perception that the military today is somehow drastically different than it was from even just a few years ago, let alone 10 plus years. And it's it's like a different world, right? I go there and I, I interact with soldiers and and senior leaders and junior leaders and and new soldiers and and non commissioned officers and um, it's the same people. It's the same people. You could pull them out and drop them ten years ago. It's the same group of people. They're they're doing the same things. They're still focused on their job. They're still more you know trying to make a living for their families and do what's right. And they have the same struggles of of you know, what's going on, on their, in their personal life and on the family side and trying to decide if they're going to make a career out of this or not. And then you jump online and it's it's all sorts of stuff like this. Uh, so just kind of like different realities, if that makes sense. Of course, it wasn't just Dewey that saw this poster and thought of the good old days. Yang R03 said, as long as the war is fought by the woke team, 
And he capitalized woke. So I feel like we should yell that. I'm going to do this again. As long as the war is fought by the woke team this time around, there shouldn't be a problem if there's another war on the horizon. So I'm not even sure what old Yanger is trying to get at here. Um, it seems like they saw a post about the U.S. military, uh, thought we got to get woke in there somehow, make sure it's capitalized, you know, to let everybody know that's what we're talking about, and then some other stuff about uh, the future war. It kind of sounds like he's saying we're going to be fine in the next... Anyways, this tends to be the theme about anything U.S. military. It's pretty funny to see. There was... God, I should have dug this one up, but there was a post from uh, probably two or three weeks ago showing you know, soldiers, Green Berets from the 7th Special Forces Group going through some training. And there were comments about people calling them weak and 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 all sorts of crazy insults in the comment section. Like, those are guys who've been through the gauntlet. Like, they are Green Berets out there kicking indoors. Um, so, it, it you know, to, to look at that and look at these guys actually walking the walk and say, yeah, that's the problem right there is, you know, sometimes these are these are pretty funny. Sometimes these comments have absolutely nothing to do with the actual post, which, if I'm being honest, are kind of my favorite. Uh, so a couple days ago, I said, on this date in 1990, the Iraqi army invaded Kuwait. This led to a UN ultimatum directing Iraq to leave the country, and with its rejection, the start of the first Gulf War in August of the same year. And A. Cash, I can't say that name, said, are you dreaming about fighting China? You got me. This post about Iraq and the Gulf War and their invasion of Kuwait was actually about China. It's all right through me. They said, you will lose to Indonesia or Vietnam. I don't think that that's an issue in the near term. I don't know that, you know, I don't have admittedly access to all U.S. war plans uh, as, you know, today or ever, but I don't know that Indonesia or Vietnam are on any sort of short list for the U.S. to enter into any sort of hostilities with. Uh, I mean, we just recently sold Apache gunships and F-16s to Indonesia. So, I, you know, things are things seem to be going all right there. I don't think a Vietnam 2.0 is anywhere on the horizon, but maybe others think differently. Said so you lost to North Korea, which is smaller than Beijing. That doesn't sound right. You think that's right? That's worth looking up. All right, North Korea is 26... No, that's the population. 46,540 square miles is North Korea. 46,000 square miles North Korea. Beijing is 6,000 square miles. That's not even close. Maybe he's talking population. So what do you say? You lost to North Korea, which is smaller than Beijing. All right, population. We'll give that a try. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Got to do that from time to time. Municipality in Beijing, 21 million. And North Korea, 26 million. That's, ah, uh, sounds like that's just not true. I don't know why they would do that. Why would they say something that's not true on the internet when making an argument? It's weird. And then adding, of course, the Korean War counts as a loss. What? Like, I, again, I, I, I love these. These crack me up. The ones that are totally outside the scope of what the post is actually talking about. Um, and goes from, you know, takes a historical event in the Middle East, compares it to a future event in China, calls out a possible war with two, at least, uh, general allies of the United States. Uh, and then back to a historical event about uh, losing the Korean War, which is still ongoing. So I don't know. Um, I wouldn't. Anyways, there's too much to soak in here, but I like this stuff. I, I, you know, a lot of them, there are some pretty rough comments from time to time. Not as many like personal attacks as you might think. They're in there. You just learn to kind of move through uh, and not take those personally. The the stuff that, that talks about, you know, or advocates harm of others, um, there's some hate speech in there, stuff like that. You really try to avoid and, and move past. That's not good. There's no place for that. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't at least enjoy reading some of these trolling comments from time to time. They're just... You know, they're so off the wall. They're a little bit entertaining. But that's all I got for now. Uh, if interested, be sure to check out the National Security Sit Reps I put out on Substack. If interested, the link is in the description below. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.